Join me in this video as I show you around a very special long range liveaboard explorer yacht that is the only vessel of her kind. And best of all, well at the time of making and uploading this video she is currently listed for sale. But more about that at the end of the video. Before I show you around this amazing vessel and trust me this is one yacht tour you are not going to want to miss, especially if you love trawler style yachts. Please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. The more subscribers I get, the more boats like this I can get on. Let's see how quickly we can get to 100,000 subscribers. As we look around the vessel's exterior, let's talk about some impressive features that make this boat a serious all-weather voyager. She was built in Holland and her round bilged hull has three watertight bulkheads. She has a steel hull that is between 7 and 8 millimeters thick and she also has a steel superstructure. Her kill type is long kill which comes with several benefits including reduced rolling, improved course keeping when in heavy seas, grounding protection and the long kill also adds to the impressive structural strength of the hull. She also has a steel rubbing strake and even her deck is made of steel. I'm pretty confident that there are not many sea states that this trawler yacht could not take on. As you can see the boat has a canoe shaped stern which is also affectionately known as a double ender. The shape offers several advantages over transom sterns on boats, particularly for explorer yachts venturing into challenging environments. For example they enable better handling in following seas because the stern deflects and channels the waves. This also helps prevent waves from breaking over the stern when battling through those big seas. The canoe shaped stern also offers better maneuverability in tight spaces. In certain conditions the canoe shaped stern can also help to reduce drag and improve efficiency compared to transom sterns. As you can see the wheelhouse is positioned aft and I love the boat's traditional stack. It really does help to give the vessel a very authentic feel. In total four of these boats were built but the other three vessels were all deployed as commercial boats so this trawler yacht really is one of a kind. As we venture to the stern of the vessel and do a pivot and face forward you'll be able to see that the wheelhouse can be accessed via a port and starboard staircase. This is a great feature especially for when you're working the lines with a minimal crew or even operating the vessel on your own. I love the fact that this boat has a fore and stern mast and I think from memory that this is the first time that I've featured a boat with a mizzen mast. Anyway let's head towards the bow of this little ship via the wide starboard side deck. Note the numerous scuppers on the deck so any water can quickly vanish back into the sea. The window frames on this boat are brass and the thick glass can also be backed up with Lexan storm plates. On the boat deck we find a rigid bottom 3.3 meter tender that is fitted with a 10 horsepower Yamaha outboard. Now this entrance on the bow leads down into the accommodation area and if an owner wanted to the forward space could be converted into a crew cabin meaning that this entrance would enable the crew to move around the boat without disturbing the owner. As we reach the bow let's spin around and face aft so we can have a look at the foremast and also taking the lines of this spectacular vessel. Note also the radar that is fitted to the foremast. Now this raised part of the foredeck is atop the galley which as you'll see in a minute means that you get loads of headroom down there. The teak deck on this boat is an incredible 5 centimeters thick. Before we head down below and I show you around the interior spaces it is worth mentioning that this boat has had two major refits. The first was in 1997 and the second was in 2001. She's also been hauled out regularly and has been incredibly well maintained. If you'd like to take a look at her maintenance and hauling out history then pause the video now. If you haven't already don't forget to check out my second YouTube channel Boat Boy I'll leave a link in the video description. On that channel I share some of my favourite features aboard the boats which I visit and I'll also be including boats on that channel that I don't feature on this channel so make sure you subscribe. In the traditionally styled wheelhouse we find a very good suite of navigation and communication electronics including a Furuno satellite compass, 
a Furuno depth sounder and log, a fish finder and echo sounder, a Sea Trek 740 autopilot, a Furuno radar, and no fewer than four GPS receivers. In case you are wondering, then this pipe feeds hot water from the engine around the wheelhouse, helping to keep the area nice and warm when you're operating in those freezing climates. There is also a Time Zero 4.1 that also displays tidal information, weather and AIS data. The info is displayed on two 19-inch monitors. Of course, with the wheelhouse positioned as it is, you get a fantastic all-round view around the vessel and the stanchions aren't so thick as to obscure your view when you're looking forward or aft. Whilst it is normal to see perhaps one clear view window on a trawl yacht like this, this particular boat has two. The aft section of the wheelhouse is an area that is dedicated to the incredibly thorough suite of communications equipment. Remember, if you need to update any of your navigation or communication equipment aboard your own boat, be sure to check out my Amazon stores. You'll find the link in the video description. Over on the port side of the wheelhouse is the entrance down into the engine room. And of course, I'll be showing you around that later on in the video. But first, let's head down below and have a look around the accommodation areas. There are a total of two cabins on this boat, providing four berths. There is, however, the option of converting the bow cabin, which is being used as a workshop, back into a cabin, giving you another two berths if you needed them. Heating is provided by a Buderus central heating system and a Cabola old English diesel heater, which is located here in the saloon. There is an impressive headroom in the saloon of over two meters. Only the guest head and the wheelhouse has a headroom under two meters. So let's start the tour of the accommodation by first showing you around the owner's part of the vessel. Of course, we are at the stern now of the boat and in here, we have the double master cabin. Lots of headroom in here and plenty of natural light because you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight portholes in here. A great area to sit over here and relax. Towards the stern, we've got an office or study area with lots of manuals, reference manuals and books for the operation of the boat. Um, this boat is operated uh, by the current owner and has been. Um, so what a fantastic boat to be an owner operator of. Uh, it really is such a privilege to be on here uh, and show you this footage and bring you this boat. But anyway, back to the accommodation. Uh, lots of storage over there as well. And that's one of the things that this boat has got a lot of as well is storage. Uh, there's so much of it, I probably won't be able to show you all of it because I don't want to open up uh, all of the uh, drawers and cupboards for obvious reasons. Uh, it's still got the owner's stuff on board. And out of respect for their privacy, I don't want to start opening stuff up. Um, but yeah, as an example over here, uh, you've got almost what I would class as a, a walk-in wardrobe because uh, you can walk in there and it is a wardrobe. Uh, so lots of hanging space in there for all of your stuff. Uh, for those extended voyages. Uh, over here on the port side, got the owner's bathroom. A huge tower rail there. Look at the size of that tower rail. Uh, nice size sink, uh, vanity mirror, another porthole uh, over here. Again, allowing lots of light in. And if you wanted to, you could open that up uh, for some additional uh, ventilation as well. A uh, decent size shower in there as well. So you can spend as much time as you want in there. If you like me or someone who likes spending a lot of time in showers. But yeah, so this whole area here really is dedicated uh, to the owner's accommodation. Uh, and I think it's a really, really nice space. Uh, lovely living area. Uh, feels very cozy, very nostalgic, uh, very comfortable. But yeah, if you're here on here with your partner, there's still enough space that you're not gonna be uh, tripping over them so big vertical radiator here which is really appreciated because it is bitterly cold outside at the moment uh, let's head up into the saloon so we're midships now and look you've even got a traditional stove type heater there uh, which you can fire up if you really needed to 
Uh, but I would imagine you'd have to be in Antarctica to get that thing fired up because it's so warm on here uh, with all of the ships, heating systems anyway. But yeah, great area, uh, large windows again. You can open these up for ventilation if you wanted to. Uh, lots of headroom. And one way you know you're on a boat that is made for serious passage making is when it has these grab rails in this part of the boat. So when you're underway, taking those big waves, you've got something to grab onto. But yeah, fantastic, airy, bright living space. Entertainment system over here on the starboard side, uh, behind the cupboards there. A uh, nice seating area as well. Great place to sit and relax, enjoy your meal. But yeah, let's head forward and I'll show you the guest accommodation and also the galley as we descend down these steps into the galley. Now, before I show you the galley, I had a vision in my mind of what I thought the galley would look like and it is vastly superior to what I thought. Um, just because of the age of the boat, I thought the galley would be very different. But it has that modern, clean, aesthetic appeal. I mean, you could spend many hours down here cooking up your favourite meal, You've got plenty of natural light, thanks to the two large portholes. Induction hob, enough for four saucepans on the go at the same time, uh, with a microwave underneath. Plenty of dry storage. A couple of dials over there, thermometer, and a clock. Uh, double sink as well, stainless steel double sink. A nice height as well. You could get two people in this galley cooking up a meal without sort of being on top of each other which if you did want to have a crew on board this boat um, and you wanted to sort of you know outsource the cooking and stuff to crew then i think it is a a, a nice place for them to work um, plenty of storage in the fridge as well and we've got a freezer down there let's open up this Ah uh, yeah, so in here we've got the guest head and shower. So it's not a wet head, it is a separate head and shower over there. Again, nice size shower. I'm seating over there so you can sit down when things get a bit choppy. But yeah, really nice galley. Um, I really like it. A great place as well. So if the owner wanted to, you know, have some privacy whilst the crew are cooking up a meal if you had a crew on board and uh, it's very easy to keep the two areas separate uh, moving forward we've got the first or well, the actual the only guest cabin as it is at the moment in its current configuration um, two berths over there on the port side because of the uh, the hull shape uh, you get plenty of space over here um, lots of headroom very cozy very comfortable a porthole up here and another one, or another two over there actually. Now that light just came on automatically, which is very handy. But yeah, more dry storage over here. All the netting to make sure the stuff doesn't fall out everywhere when you're underway in choppy seas. Open this up, add some more storage. But yeah, it gives you an idea of how much storage there is on board. Now, in here, this has been turned into a, a workshop with lots of spare parts. Originally, it was set up as a cabin, so if you purchased this boat and you wanted to have a second guest cabin on board, uh, then you could transform this back into another guest cabin. Uh, but also, as well, if you wanted to turn it into a crew cabin, then as well as being uh, an escape route for passengers and crew on the boat you could also use this as a means of allowing the crew access to their accommodation uh, without having to go through the main part of the boat but look, i mean the current owner of this boat is a meticulous planner and as you can see we've got spare parts for everything uh, the washers uh, the generator spare parts even got a box over here for impellers a really well thought out boat for autonomous long distance passage making.
As we head to the engine room, let me fill you in with some information regarding her tank capacity. In total, this boat has enough tank capacity for 2,600 litres, which is 690 US gallons of fresh water. She can also carry 860 litres, which is 230 US gallons of black and grey water, which is pumped out using a hydraulic duty pump. And remember, if you are thinking of planning your own long range voyage, then be sure to check out this book. You'll find the relevant link as well as a substantial discount code in the video description. As you saw earlier on in the yacht tour, access to the engine room is gained via a stairwell located on the port side of the wheelhouse. And if you love engine rooms, then I'll be really interested to hear and read what you think about this engine room. So be sure to leave your comments below. The vessel is powered by a single Gardner 8L3B 230 horsepower or 169 kilowatts diesel engine that was installed when the boat was built. It did however have a major inspection and was partially overhauled by Gardner UK in 2019. The engine itself is cooled via a freshwater heat exchanger and the engine can be preheated by the heat exchange in the heating system. Turning the four bladed 53 inch propeller is a grease lubricated steel shaft that is eight inches in diameter. The boat is fitted with a wet exhaust Lister PETA 12.5 kilowatt 220 volt generator as well as a four kilowatt 24 volt Fisher Panda that was installed in 2012. The boat does have a manual bilge pump as well as an electric one. Over on the starboard side of the engine room is this handy work area, complete with a tool kit and a workbench. As you have probably guessed already, this boat is all about redundancy. And when we head over to the day tank over here on the starboard side of the engine room, you'll notice three sets of backup for the fuel pumps, including two electric pumps and one manual one. The boat is fitted with a bow and stern thruster. The stern thruster is an electric twin 11 horsepower proportional system and in the bow a brand new 30 horsepower hydraulic thruster was fitted in 2023. Of course safety is paramount so it's good to see an exit here should the other one become blocked. The boat can carry 11,000 litres which is 2,900 US gallons of fuel split between two bunker tanks. Her day tank can carry 335 litres. The fuel is polished by a fuel mag magnetic fuel treatment and circulation system and each bunker tank has its own system. When it comes to her speed and range she has a cruising speed of 8.5 knots with a range that is in excess of 2500 nautical miles. However if you drop that speed by one knot down to 7.5 knots then the range increases to over 3,000 nautical miles. It's also worth pointing out that the boat does have an emergency tiller and an emergency fuel driven bilge pump. The helm steering is power assisted and has a backup pump as well. But what do you think of the engine room? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for joining me on this yacht tour. I've been really excited to show you around this boat. So let me know what you think of it in the comments below. At the time of making this video and uploading it to my YouTube channel, the boat is currently listed for sale with the Vault Yacht Brokers. If you want to find out more, then I'll leave a link to the listing at the bottom of the video description. I'd like to say a massive thank you to the Vault Yacht Brokers for letting me come on board and film this boat and also I'd like to say a massive thank you to the owner as well for agreeing to allow me to come on board this boat. If you've got access to a boat you'd like me to feature on my YouTube channel then feel free to get in contact with me. I'll leave my contact details in the video description and if you haven't already please don't forget to give the video a like and also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I really want to try and get to the 100,000 subscriber mark if we can and I'll need your help to do that. Thanks for watching, don't forget to give the video a like. Until next time, fair winds and following seas.
And if you love Trawler style yachts, then I'm 100% certain you'll love the video that I made about Scintilla Marie, a former Dutch beam trawler that's been converted into a luxury expedition yacht. If you'd like to check that video out, I'll leave my Trawler Yacht playlist link in the video description. And if you did enjoy this video, I'm 100% confident you'll enjoy the video that I made about this phenomenal explorer yacht, motor yacht Astra. Again, you'll find the link to the relevant playlist in the video description. A big thank you to my channel members for helping to support my channel by becoming a member. Your monthly pledge allows me to cover some of the travel expenses associated with these visits that I make. So I really appreciate your support. And if you're interested in becoming a channel member, you've guessed it, I'll leave the link in the video description. Thank you.